Well, first of all, thank you for, uh, for inviting me and thank you for having this crowdsourcing week. Uh, first time outside of Singapore happened in Brussels. I think this is the best location. You could not have chosen a better location. Now, uh, first of all, who thinks this is a good looking bike? I'm actually quite proud of this because this is made by a startup that is very close to where I live. Torsten, where are you? There, there he is. So this is from a uh, city, Oudenaarde, which is 10 kilometers away from, uh, from me. Uh, the region where I come from, you might know that as the region where the uh, Ronde van Vlaanderen, the Tour de Fra uh, Flandre uh, is. So it's a big uh, cycling region, uh, but we're actually quite proud that I, I already in the tweet said Maybe the Tesla of the motorbikes is uh, starting in the Flemish Ardennes, which is where I, uh, where I grew up. I'm actually quite proud to, uh, uh, to see this. I do not think you want us to drive with this, right? No. Okay. But one day. One day. Um, but um, I'm not here to talk about, uh, about uh, motorcycles, but to talk about digital, uh, digital Belgium. So digital Belgium is um, the plan we have made in Belgium to be um, one of the top ecosystems in, uh, in Europe in the, digital, uh, in the digital space. Now, what is Digital Belgium? It's very simple. Uh, digital Belgium is about an economic opportunity, and it's an opportunity for growth. All countries are looking uh, for ways to have more economic growth. The last decade, economic growth has been actually quite, uh, quite weak. But we see that there is one part of the economy where there is a lot of growth, and that is everything which is linked to digital and the industries that are incorporating the pro productivity increases of, uh, of digital. Even if you look at the last 10 years, in Belgium the growth was quite weak the last, uh, last 10 years, approximately 1.5%. Uh, 85% of that in Belgium was actually coming thanks to digital, the digital sector, and thanks to the impact of digital on the classic sectors. So if we would not have had of that, you would have Belgium probably had more or less zero, uh, zero growth. So it's about growth and it's about job creation. Now, a lot of people will say, well, is digital actually creating jobs? We thought it was destroying jobs. And it's true. The digital revolution is destroying jobs. But for every two jobs that are destroyed, there's five new jobs that are created. On a net basis, the digital revolution is creating jobs. Now, the challenge, of course, is that the two jobs that are destroyed are not at all the same jobs that are created. These are very different types of jobs. And making sure that the skill set evolves in the right direction is obviously one of the biggest challenges we, uh, we have. But I am not one of these that believe that in the long run, um, humans will not have jobs anymore. I don't believe that. Actually, if you look at the last 100 years, technology has created way more jobs than it has destroyed. And technology has actually improved the quality of jobs in a very drastic way. If you compare the very agricultural-oriented society of 100 years ago, and you look at the society today, what are the jobs that have disappeared? It's often the jobs that were back-breaking, that had no stability, that were in the informal economy, and they have been replaced by more stable jobs that were intellectually uh, more challenging for, uh, for people, and that actually were much, much more uh, healthy. I see no reason why that evolution of the last 100 years would not translate in the next, uh, in the next 30 years. We can expand on that, but I understood I only have 15 minutes, but we have five minutes for questions, so you can ask questions on that if you, uh, uh, if you want. Um, what's the goal? The goal is to create uh, 1,000 new startups between now and, uh, and 2020, that is in uh, that specific uh, sphere, and create uh, 50,000 new jobs based on the digital, uh, on the digital economy. So I think that's... Um, quite clear what our, uh, our goal is. I have, uh, to, to work on this, constituted a group which is called the Digital Minds of, uh, of, of Belgium. This is basically a selection of uh, the greatest thinkers and the greatest practitioners we have in the digital, uh, digital ecosphere. Um, to be my sounding board, but also to be our uh, ambassadors. Now, probably a few of you are thinking, why am I not on this slide? I understand, 
when you make a selection, you obviously have to, uh, uh, have to choose. Uh, we have taken people from the more classic industry, we have taken people from the uh, startup uh, e ecosystem, we have taken people from the academic world, uh, financing and, uh, and so on. Now, what was the whole, the whole approach of Digital Belgium? We tried to do it in a very startup way. Um, making a plan is a good thing, but governments are actually quite good at making plans. We make a lot of plans, but often those plans just stay on the table. Um, just as in the startup world, a plan or an idea is basically worthless. The only thing that is really valuable is if you can translate that plan into something which is happening. And so we spent a very short time on making that plan, a few months, and then we said, okay, let's go ahead. Uh, let's put some priorities. Some priorities, I'm quite sure they're right. Some priorities we might have to change at some point. Some things we might have missed and we might, might, uh, might change that. But I don't think that's the problem. I think the most important element that we need is to just make sure that we get, uh, uh, get going. Who knows what this is? This is it's the hashtag, right? No, this is not a hashtag. This is the waffle tag. No one knew that, but actually we Belgians have copyrights on the, uh, on the hashtag. I told that to our friends of, uh, of, uh, of Twitter. They really couldn't believe it, but they appreciated the Belgian sense of humor. Now, this waffle tag is the symbol for uh, the startup manifesto. I think um, Mr. Daman already spoke today or yesterday. He spoke yesterday on the startup manifesto. So the whole startup ecosystem in Belgium has been very, very collaborative towards digital, uh, digital Belgium. So the Startup Manifesto is basically a group of people from the startup world who in a collaborative way started to make a document to sound what they think would be the things that should be, uh, should be in there. It's a group that almost did not meet physically. It was purely based on a, on a collaborative uh, system. Uh, and in a few weeks, they came out with a few things that were actually quite, uh, quite good. And a few of these things were the first ones that we tried to implement in, uh, in digital, uh, digital Belgium. So what we tried to do was just put five priorities, five domains that we will be working on for the next, uh, for the next years. And I will go in detail to some of, uh, of these. So first pillar we are working on is on the digital economy. Now, what do I mean with the digital economy? This is, of course, much more than just looking at e-commerce and create, creating the right circumstances for, uh, uh, for e-commerce. This is thinking about what should be the role of a government. I think that it is much more about new business models than it is about technology. Technology is an enabler and technology is something that makes certain business models possible. But the big discussion you have today is on completely disruptive business models and how do you make sure that they can happen in a certain country, but how do you make sure that certain rules are also respected? Obviously, the case in point all over the world is how to um, deal with one company that is organizing taxi services. Or maybe if I say that, I'm already making a mistake, but is it a taxi service or is it not a taxi service? It's part of the, uh, of the discussion. Basically, towards these kind of, of settings, there's there are basically two big answers you can give. You can give one answer, which I would call the French answer, which is put them in jail and everything will be solved. Uh, this is typically what has happened in, uh, in, in France. And the other solution could be to say, you know, this is digital, it's new, let's just make it happen regardless of, of our own uh, rules. I think the best answer, the right answer, is actually somewhere in the middle. Yes, we should make sure that these business models can take place, but you should also make sure that our fiscal and social rules are respected, of course. It's not because it's new that it should be completely exempt from, uh, uh, from our fiscal system. But maybe it's also an opportunity to review certain things in our fiscal and our taxation system that are actually not adapted to this kind of, uh, of, of economy. The example um, I'm, I'm showing here is from a, a Belgian startup. It's called Take It Easy. Take It Easy is a startup that is doing uh, home delivery of, uh, of, of meals. 
It's actually a quite uh, quite successful one in Belgium and in France, I, uh, I think. The big issue is, of course, these people, the people who are doing deliveries. How should you treat them? I mean, should they be independent? Should they have their own VAT number? To which level can they actually work without having to do that? What is the way to deal with, uh, with that? And there a government needs to play what I would call the, the finger at the pulse role. I mean, we need to look at what is happening, what are the new business models, and how can you make sure that these things are happening. Now, some people criticize me for that in saying, you know, why are you doing this? You're just helping big American startups. Uh, you are leading to the uberization of the economy. I mean, there's a lot of things that are being said on, uh, on that. First of all, I'm not here to defend big American startups, but if they want to come to Belgium, why not? I mean, why would we say in a very protectionist manner, oh, please stay away? But the real reason I'm doing that is for companies like these. There's a few hundred Belgian startups that are trying to set up something in the peer-to-peer -peer economy. Well, how sad would it be if those Belgian startups would have to go to the UK or to the United States to test their business model where they actually can do it here in Brussels, in the center of Europe, in a great location, with a great population, has a big uh, purchasing power, and so on. So I want to make sure that these things can actually take place here. Second element is that the peer-to-peer -peer economy is one of the strongest forces you have today to drive entrepreneurship. It has never been easier today to be an entrepreneur than before. And especially towards a group that before would never have thought that they could be self-employed. A lot of people that are in this system eventually become self-employed. And often will start up a company, group a few people to do, these, to do these kind of services. Five to ten years ago, a lot of these people would never have thought that they could become independent or self-employed. Never, never, never. And this peer-to-peer -peer economy is lowering the thresholds for people to become an entrepreneur. If you think social mobility is an important thing, and I really think social mobility is much more the issue than inequality is the issue today. Inequality is just looking at the difference in, 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 uh, in, in, in uh, available income. Social mobility is the fact, do people move up in society? Actually, in Belgium, we're not very strong on that. If you look simply at what people do and you compare it with what their parents did, actually, in general, it's quite, um, quite comparable, which is not a good thing. I'm, I'm the bad example, obviously. I see some of you smile. I agree. I am the bad example. It's not because I'm the bad example that I could not plead for, uh, uh, for it. But if social mobility is important, entrepreneurship is the key thing for social mobility and digital is making entrepreneurship more easy than it has ever been in Europe, but also in the rest of the world. And some of you might know that I'm also Minister of um, Development Cooperation. Digital is today the thing that is lifting, for example, Africa out of, uh, out of poverty. It's not so much the budget that I spend, it's much more the investments that the telecom sector is doing. And guess what? This is the private sector. And the private sector is doing that because they want profit. And profit is actually a good thing. I'm not in a room full of NGOs because they start booing me if I say that. But profit is a good thing. If you want to have sustainable business, there is no sustainable business if there is no profit. A profit, I think, is a, um, is a good thing. Self-driving cars. Previous speaker uh, talked about it. There is one element, and that is, is, is connectivity. And if you look at connectivity in Belgium today, we're actually, we're actually quite good. If you look at fixed internet, there is no country in Europe that has higher speeds for fixed internet than we, uh, than we have. You look at, for example, at the Netflix statistics. The Netflix statistics, Belgium is number one. Number one worldwide on the download, uh, download speeds. There is no country where more people have access to more than 30 megabits per second. Uh, where more people have access to that. So I think we're actually quite great on that. We should be much more ambitious. The goal is by 2020 to have half of the Belgian population speeds of one gigabit per second, which is approximately the same as fiber uh, to the home. I know that some people say, well, 
what for, what will people use this for? That's a great question. And I'm sure you have ideas on that. I'm sure if you provide the speed, people will come up with crazy things. And a lot of those things will be crazy, but some of those crazy things will actually be great ideas. And I think we should create the space for, uh, for that. Mobile connectivity is something else. And I think mobile connectivity is the key thing if you look at self-driving cars. That's why you need 5G. You don't need 5G that really about download speeds. I think the difference in download speed is not that big. But 5G is important because you have an explosion of the number of internet uh, connect connection, mobile connections that you will have. And there is the element of latency. If you want cars to communicate one with another, it needs to be instantly. Today on 4G, there is a certain latency, which is really a problem if you want cars to communicate one with another. Um, I think the one advice I got was to make sure that governments in Belgium talk to each other. Um, I think that is obviously a valid point. Um, I think if Brussels would be putting a tax on, uh, on, on, uh, on cell phone base stations, I think that would be a wrong idea. And I say it in a very, in a very gentle way. I mean, uh, mobile connectivity is today the source for innovation. If you're taxing mobile base stations, you're basically taxing innovation. And I think that's a wrong, uh, a wrong thing. But we are talking with the Brussels government. Do not, uh, do not worry. Digital skills. I talked briefly about, uh, about that, about the fact that the jobs that are destroyed are not the same as the jobs that are, uh, that are created. Um, this is an enormous challenge. Today, 60% of the Belgian workforce has some digital skills, which is not bad, but by 2020, the estimation is that 90% of all jobs will require some knowledge of digital. This is a huge thing. It means that one third of the working population in the next years needs to get some basic skills. We don't want them to be IT engineers, but they need to have some basic skills. We will need anyone to cooperate in this. That's why we have created the Grand Coalition for Digital Jobs, which is led by uh, Saskia van Uffelen, who is the CEO of Ericsson in, uh, in, uh, in Belgium, to really use anything we have. We will be looking at the private sector, we will be looking at the civil society, we will be looking at governments and, and regional governments to make sure that everyone gets a basic element of using, uh, of using uh, digital. I also think that we need some reflection. I mean, I talked about the fact that I believe that there will be jobs for everyone. I'm quite sure of that. The real issue, of course, is will there be jobs only for the Einsteins of this world? Or will there be jobs really for everyone? Or are you going to a society where the ones who are very strong at abstract thinking will have a job, and the other ones who will say, you know, just stay home and please don't bother us? That would be the biggest mistake we can ever make. And if you think about what will humans always be good at, obviously humans will always be good at creativity, will always be good at problem solving. Another thing that humans will always be better at than machines is everything which is related to emotions. And if you take those three elements, so creativity, problem solving, and emotions, Every child has a talent in one of these three. Every child has it. And what worries me is that I have two sons, four years and seven years old. They go to school. They basically learn the same as what I have learned 30 years ago, where I would actually want them to learn certain things that we believe will be important in 20 years and make sure that kids who are not the biggest abstract thinkers develop skills in other elements that we think are, uh, are important. That kind of thinking, I don't see it in Europe today, and it's something that actually uh, uh, worries me. Trust and uh, digital security, I, I, I think, uh, and since I'm running out of time, I will jump quickly through that, not because I don't like the subject. This is a very important subject. If you want a digital economy to be for everyone, um, Trust, I think, is the key, uh, key element, and governments need to do certain things there, but SMEs also, and individuals also. I think today, um, if you leave your house 
this morning and you leave the key on the front door, you get home tonight and your home is emptied, everyone will say that you have been very stupid and your insurance will not pay you back. In the digital world, a lot of people do this today. A lot of people just have the key on the front door and there's a lot of sensibilization to be done and making clear to people that it's also their role to protect their, uh, uh, their info uh, information. Quickly on, uh, on digital government, there's a lot of things to be said. Important one is open data. Uh, we have worked a lot together with the open data community in, uh, in, in Belgium to, making, to make sure that our law is, is, is a good one. It will be voted in Parliament in a, few, uh, in a few weeks. This will be one of the most forward-looking open data legislations that you have in, uh, in Europe. Basically, we say, you know, the data, it's your data. And this is the change of philosophy. Up to now, governments often said, it's our data. Actually, no, it's your data. And we as government have no monopoly in saying we are the only ones who can create value with that data. I think you should flip it around. It's your data. You can play with it. You can use it. And we believe that if you use it, in general, you will do good things with it. And if you do bad things with it, we will intervene but not the other way around. I think a lot of people are very protective and protective in a way of, you know, bad things might happen. Let people do. I think in general, if you give people freedom, I think people do good things if you, uh, if you give them freedom. I mean, if I said I'm a liberal, it's normal that I say that, but I believe that if you make things possible in general, people do, um, uh, do good things. So, um, I've highlighted a few, uh, few elements. You can find the details on digitalbelgium.be. Uh, uh, There's a part of what we've achieved on financing. We have a system of tax shelter. We have also a special system for, uh, for crowdsourcing, which is the topic of here. So if you want to hear about it, please ask me, uh, uh, ask me questions on, uh, on this. And if you have remarks, please send me a Twitter message. Alexander de Croo is my Twitter handle. Thank you a lot. <laughs>